Namaste. Have you been? Internalization, visualization, listening to sounds, chanting, praying, singing, reading scriptures or classical text, and even looking at a certain object or gazing at a symbol in front of you for prolonged periods of time are powerful for stilling the mind, you know, channeling the energy, and awakening the silent centers of the brain. And this is so true. I use these techniques. Yeah. For my meditations, I can attain a single point of attention. And this has led me to a number of absorptions in the past already. All right, let me talk about visualizations and the shapes. In the last tutorial, I've mentioned the shape of the sphere, the lingam. And inside the body, there are like 12 points. The important are the three ones, the hips positioned upright to lift the spine, uh, lateral across the forehead, and then flat, the crown of the head. All right, so let us focus here because this is the meditative part of our practice. All right, but before I progress, let me mention yeah, that we're still using the body and the breath to safely it's important to safely practice these techniques. Yeah, If you just depend on these meditative services without you building physical and energetic strength, mobility, and openness of the nadis, this could lead to energy cut, stagnation, short circuits. And that's not good. It could damage the brain. So you do your share. Yeah. So a progressive and regular practice of asana, pranayama, and mudras are essential. Of course, you're off, off the mat of services, of taking care of your health, supportive lifestyle, reduction of mental stress. All of this will lead to a safe and meaningful practice. All right, going back here. All right, so the shape of the sphere or the shape of the lingam laterally positioned here in the center of this, yeah, the eyebrow center. All right, so by lifting your internal vision up there, visualizing that you're looking there between the eyebrows, inhale, and then from that point, expand laterally. And as you exhale, go back to the center and down. All right, so there's a huge difference between rolling the eyes and visualizing you're looking up, yeah? So when you visualize, your eyes are not doing it, but you will feel like the muscles and the nerves yeah, move inside. And then you will feel. Rolling the eyes is a physical movement. But when you visualize, it's magnetizing. Yes. So you're going to feel like the nerves yeah, become lightly stimulated. And then the muscles, the internal muscles of the eyes work. At, and you're going to feel a magnetizing sensation. It's quite hypnotic, actually. Yeah. So like you're gazing in front, like you're solving a puzzle or an abstract yeah, work. Uh, and for you to really you know, see what's hidden on the external image, you have to go past. Yeah. Like you are drifting from your conscious state to unconscious state. And then that same thing you apply when lifting your internal gaze up. It's the internal Shambhavi Mudra, actually. External Shambhavi is when you roll your eyes up and then you are consciously yeah, seeking for this dark spot between the eyebrows and allow your eyes to go lazy. Internally, you do the same, but you're using your brain. Visualization. Right. And for some people, other things will happen too. For example, other images, shapes, colors, flashing lights, blinking lights. Right. And then aside from the vision, you might also become sensitive to sounds. Like you can hear inside your brain, not your ears. This is common. The sound of... Good. The bull rubbing. Oh, yeah. This. The chime. Or singing. Or musical instruments playing. But they're not there externally. But they exist. 
because we experience them. That is, yeah, s the uh, common, I say, manifestation of the lingam of the forehead. Yeah. So the lingam, as I've mentioned, the last is the invisible, yeah, equivalence of our consciousness. It's the state of invisibility. Yeah. It's a state of our uh, mental energy. Yeah. And then the consciousness manifests, yeah, as we go through yeah, this I say deep, yeah, meditative experiences. So this is now we are, yeah, you are crossing or transitioning from dharana, state of meditation, state of focus, yeah, focus. And then once the brain yeah, does it for you and not you doing it anymore, it becomes dhyana. Yeah. So the, the state of what? Meditation. Yeah. And there's this only thin line yeah, which separates dhyana from samadhi. All right. And then samadhi happens, yeah, at the distinctive point where your your brain drifts to unconsciousness, yeah, but a part of you is holding to your conscious state. All right. So you're like in a limbo, transitioning from sleep to about to dream, yeah. Like you're dreaming but you know you're not sleeping because you're aware and then the energy anatomy yeah, backs off. The breath will go so light yeah, that you feel like you're not breathing, but you know you're breathing because <laughs> you're functioning healthily. That is the reason why I'm so uh, specific about building your energetic anatomy. Because for some people who are so good at meditation, they might not be able to control this transition. And that is bad because this energy will suddenly rush to the brain and then for them, some people, it's common. They lose like your control of their senses. Some people pass out. Some people like experience a seizure or an uncontrollable vibration of the body because this is electricity flowing through the body. But when the body is strong, when the energy anatomy is open, bandhas, nadis are sensitive, we can regulate it. So we can really enjoy, yeah, the steps leading to samadhi. And that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Samadhi, you know what? Samadhi is just trance. And the other things there, like um, interacting with other subtle vibration and then going really deep inside the brain and then yeah, experiencing what's there while you're traveling around. Yeah. And going back to your body. It's it's for me, yeah, for me, it's just an experience. It's like experiencing another dimension. The beauty of this is actually as we enjoy <laughs> what's leading us to that direction. Yeah, and then this, I like, yeah, the things happening. Um, because if we, if we are just so focused on that <laughs> yeah, goal, um, it may not happen. Really, because for me, um, part of it is, I'd say, destiny. Yeah? Some people are um, open to begin with. Yeah? They're just continuing from their past karma. Yeah? And then for some people, yeah, we might have to work really hard. I'm one of them. I started so low. I didn't even know anything about yoga at all, but I was enjoying it. I love what I do. It serves me physically. It serves me energetically. It helps me yeah, clear the mind. And this is my nature. I am a natural teacher. And then when I practice and I experience something, realize something, yeah, I translate them into lessons which my students yeah, would benefit from, but not actually teach them that. I translate them into lessons which are practical yeah, and general. Right. But as a if but as a meditator, yeah, if you are at this stage already that you're feeling yeah, the subtleness, and then you want to just find yeah a focal point yeah the shape yeah this is really very powerful. 
yeah, the full heat. Because this is where um, the energy of the body goes up and it pierces up and it goes inside the brain, the Shashara Chakra. And this is another topic altogether. This might require a long discussion. But here, yeah, yeah. when you meditate, you might just focus there. Inhale and expand. And this will not only serve during meditation, it's so good for like exercising the optic nerves and clearing the mind. Yeah. And this is safe. Yeah. So for example, you feel like your mind, your eyes uh, start to strain as they were. Look away, inhaling, and allow that expansive awareness to clear your brain. Thank you, as always. And I'll catch you in the next one. Namaste.